Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 12, 2022 Hillsborough Township Board of Education meeting. In accordance with the state's Sunshine Law of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Hillsborough Township Board of Education was provided on September 8, 2022 to the Hillsborough Beacon and the Courier News. Uh, can we please take roll? Mr. Gillette? Here. Ms. Jackson? Here. Mr. Kidd? Here. Ms. Lanning Beater? Here. Ms. Nurse? Here. Mr. Oliver? Here. Ms. Jeru? Ms. Trujillo? Here. And Mr. Marini? Here. We have a quorum. I will have a motion to move into executive session, whereas the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Laws of 1975, provide that a public body may exclude the public from the portion of the meeting of which the public body discusses certain matters for which confidentiality is required. That's written in 7B of the Act, resolved by the Board of Education of the Township of Hillsborough of the County of Somerset in the State of New Jersey as follows. The matters to be discussed are superintendent search and personnel matters. The matters discussed in executive session shall be disclosed to the public and the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll return from exec around 7.30. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the Monday, September 12, 2022, Hillsborough Township Board of Education meeting. Uh, we'd like to begin with roll call. Mr. Gillette? Here. Ms. Jackson? Here. Mr. Kidd? Here. Ms. Lanning Beater? Here. Ms. Nurse? Here. Mr. Oliver? Here. Mr. Rue? Here. Ms. Trujillo? Here. And Mr. Marini? Here. We have a quorum. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, I'd like to acknowledge the correspondence as listed. Um, we don't have any committee reports tonight, unless there's anybody that has an update on anything. Nope, okay. All right, um, the board president's report, It'll be very uh, short and sweet. Um, as noted on the agenda, we met with the search committee tonight. We're making excellent progress and we are on schedule. Um, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Fishbein for his first Board of Ed meeting. Welcome. Thank you. All right, I think I'm just reading the proclamation. Yeah. Okay. Read the proclamation there. Okay. All right, and item 7.2, National Suicide Prevention Month proclamation. Whereas September is known throughout the United States as National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, an initiative intended to help raise awareness that prevention is possible, treatment is effective, and people do recover. And whereas suicidal thoughts can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, race, orientation, income level, religion, or background. And whereas according to the United States Center for Disease Control, each year more than 46,000 people die by suicide. And whereas suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among adults in the US, and the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34, and is one of the most tragic events a family and community can experience. And whereas Hillsborough, a stigma-free community, is no different than any other community in the country, but chooses to publicly state that it lends its full support behind local educators, mental health professionals, athletic coaches, scout leaders, police officers, and parents as community partners of being available to one another. And whereas in these challenging times, messages of hope and healing are needed now more than ever, and whereas Burroughs saves goal to raise community awareness that suicide is preventable, residents are encouraged to educate themselves on the warning signs of suicide, understand suicide is preventable, and that there are resources available, and whereas if anyone is in crisis or experiencing suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Hotline at 988. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we, the Hillsborough Township Board of Education, hereby declare September 2022 as National Suicide Awareness Month and vow to continue to support suicide awareness programs dedicated to helping our community. All right. And we will now move on to the interim superintendent's report. Good evening and welcome to the uh, new school year. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce myself. I'm Dan Fishbein. I'm going to be the interim uh, superintendent of schools until this uh, board appoints a permanent superintendent. Uh, it's been an exciting uh, time to visit our schools over the last two weeks and uh, be part of uh, an opening that's a little bit more typical um, this year than it has been for the last few years. Um, there's nothing like the sound of, of students um, in school, filling the hallways, um, outside on the playgrounds, um, 
enjoying themselves, laughing, and being excited about being in school. So our teachers and administrators have once again made their schools uh, safe, happy, and wonderful places to learn and grow. Uh, just a reminder, uh, in, in accordance with the new HIB legislation that, uh, that passed on June 13th, 2022, um, revisions to our policy 5512, harassment, intimidation, and bullying, were approved by the Board of Education. Um, there have been significant changes in the new law, and uh, Ms. Uh, Smedley, Director of Counseling and District Anti-Bullying Specialist, has been working to update our process and forms. On October 10th, the Board of Education um, is going to receive some training at 6.30. Okay, I think um, there was a mistake last meeting. They said 10.30. I don't stay up that late. Um, and uh, David Nash, um, an attorney um, and director for legal education and national outreach for the Foundation of Education Administration, will provide the board training on the updated law and policy. Some teacher recognition. I'd like to recognize uh, Hillsborough Middle School literacy teacher, Mr. Uh, Ian Evans, who has been chosen as the Somerset County Teacher of the Year. Mr. Evans was chosen for this award after being selected as Hillsborough Middle School Teacher of the Year last year. At a recent award ceremony, Mr. Evans was recognized for his reflective practice, thorough thoughtfulness, willingness to listen and, and be creative. Um, thank you, Mr. Evans, for all you do for your students each and every day. I'd also like to recognize Hillsborough High School Social Studies teacher, Mr. Rob Robert Fenster, who was recently named NEA Foundation Global Learning Fellow. Over the next year, fellows will immerse themselves in online courses, webinars, reading, and reflection. That includes a two-day professional workshop and an international field study. The cohort field study investigates historical and cultural context of the country they visit, including its educational system. It's exciting to share um, that next summer, Mr. Fenster, Fenster um, field study country is South Africa. Congratulations um, for this honor. Um, every year I like to give a little snapshot of, of where we are um, and a little bit of uh, where we were. So I'm not going to go through all the numbers, but you can see on the screen behind me uh, where we are as far as enrollment is concerned. Um, one, one area to note um, is uh, Woods Road Elementary, you see the asterisk there. So um, that is a program for three and four year olds and those students age in, you know, uh, at three and four. So if they become uh, uh, three and, and need the services, um, they'll go to the programs um, if they've identified to need those services. And that, that um, program grows as the school year goes. Um, the enrollment for that is very different than like kindergarten. Um, a lot of work went into um, uh, revising and developing new courses in the area of, of curriculum. Um, I thank Kim for all the hard work and all the supervisors who did that. Um, so um, there's, there's quite a bit that went on uh, this summer. Um, and uh, in HR, uh, we hired uh, quite a few uh, new teachers. Um, some of the, the 67 um, were hired um, in, the, in the spring. So you can see that a lot of hiring went, went, um, took place in this district um, throughout the summer and, and in the spring um, to make sure that we have the people we need to operate the district. Um, facility upgrades, as you can imagine, our, our buildings are full of kids and, and staff uh, during the school year. So the summer months, you know, every school in the whole country is trying to get all their work done. Um, so uh, a lot of work was done this year. Um, and right now we're at the tail end of the refer referendum.
as far as IT is concerned, um, a little bit different than uh, construction, but a lot of the work that takes place um, uh, as far as our IT department is concerned is done uh, during the summer, especially when you look at um, intercom emergency alert, digital hallway speakers, you know, all that was done uh, um, in the spring and, and during the summer. So I uh, appreciate all the work that was done, all the administrators and uh, staff members who worked to make sure that our buildings are ready. Um, you can see by the shine on the floor that our custodians worked real hard. Um, and uh, in a few months, because of all the little feet, the shine will be a little bit duller, um, but that only means that it's because it's being used uh, for the right purposes. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Dr. Schein. All right, now we'll move on to approval of minutes. Um, 9-1 through 9.4, uh, motion to approve executive session minutes, 8-22-22, motion to approve public minutes, 8-22-22, motion to approve public minutes, 8-24-22, and motion to approve executive session minutes, 8-24-22. Can I get a motion and a second? Second. Uh, any discussion by the board? All right. Do roll. We do roll. And, and any abstentions before we do all in favor? No? Nope. All right. All, all in favor? Bye. Aye. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to comments from the board public. We very much welcome input from the public during board meetings. There'll be two 30 minute periods of time. The meeting will be open to public comment where members of the public are invited to comment, which they may do if they are attending in person. During the first public comment period, members of the public may comment about items that are listed on tonight's agenda before the board votes. During the second public comment period, members of the public may comment on any school or school district issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the school district as per bylaw 0167. Before you state your comment, you'll be asked to provide your name and address. There's a three minute limit on public comment. Please understand that our public forums are not structured as question and answer sessions, but rather offered as opportunities to share your thoughts with the board. In instances where the board believes there's a misunderstanding or inaccuracy, the board president or superintendent will address the comment. There may be times when a member of the public makes a comment or asks a question about Personnel are hiring decisions. Kindly note the Open Public Meetings Act, the privacy rights of public employees and companies therein do not permit the board to discuss personnel issues in public session. Uh, if anybody has any uh, comments they would like to make, please address the action item agenda number. And we're gonna do our best to hold to the three minutes here. I know we've been getting a little loose with that in recent weeks. Reverend Rod Williams, 101 Ever Close. Uh, welcome Dr. Fishbein, glad to have you mixed. Um, you mentioned the hiring stats on the new teachers there and so, um, I'm wondering if they, we know anything about the diversity breakdown in terms of those numbers and if there are plans to focus on the need to make the staff more diverse, especially since the school district itself has become more diverse in terms of student population. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Henry Goodhue, Hillsborough Education Association. Um, just before I get to my action agenda, I would like to thank the board and uh, the administration for recognizing Mr. Evans as the county uh, teacher of the year. We're incredibly proud of that. We're also incredibly proud that this is the second time in a very short period of time that Hillsborough, one of our members, one of your employees has been recognized as county teacher of the year. And we also have had the ESP of the year for the county as well. So it's wonderful to see that our district and our members continue to be recognized for their excellence in their respective fields. Uh, related to the action agenda, I would just like to speak to um, item 13.5, which is the submission of the application for stabilization aid. And that is to commend everyone for coming together and taking the steps to do that. It's been a number of years that we've encouraged uh, the board and the administration to do that. And this is one of the first times that we've actually followed through with seeking that aid out and trying to recover some of the loss under S2 that has so dramatically impacted our schools. Uh, so I do thank you for doing that. Thank you. Good evening, Stefania Lockwoods, Millstone River Road. Sorry, I have a broken toe. Um, I'm speaking regarding 12.2, uh, retirements and resignations. It's become a bit of a broken record around here um, that you know we're seeing a lot of turnover but it's especially troublesome to see to me as a former teacher retirements where people are choosing to take their retirement mid-year but the moment they can get out of the building they're gone 
Um, every single teacher that I worked with when I was teaching who retired waited until the end of the year um, because of the stability that it provides to their students and the investment that they have in their careers at, even at the end. Um, and that's really troubling. And it's, it speaks to me um, that we still have a lot of work to do on culture um, and, and retention because we can't even get people to, to wait out a few more months. Um, it's also especially troublesome to see people who, um, in the resignations, again, from my experience, seem to have found a greener pasture late in the summer, despite this year's drought, um, and are leaving our district with significant vacancies um, at, in the mid-year. Again, it's not something that I ever saw happen in a district that was thriving uh, in terms of culture for its for its staff. So this is this is troubling, and I hope that the board has, as part of its <clears throat> excuse me, as part of its hiring process for the new superintendent, taken this into consideration the importance of developing culture because the evidence continues to pile up in front of us just how unappealing Hillsborough can be to some of our staff members, and that's. That's a shame, it really is, because we do have great staff members, um, and it'd be really nice to retain them and have them be here for, for their career. I actually, um, just as a little, I got an email from someone in HR at work, and I'd never seen this before, um, and their signature included hire to retire, which is corny, but it's a neat, powerful little cliche, hire to retire, and I, I think that we should take that to heart here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on the action agenda? All right, we'll move forward with the action agenda. I'd like to, I'd like to present for consideration 11.1, um, professional travel related expenses. 11.2, um, stipend for after school language extended exploration program, LEAP. 11.3, um, concurrent enrollment courses and stipends for the 2022-2023 school year. 11.4, attending AP computer science and project STEM professional development. 11.5, um, administer the measure of developmental, developing English language model proficiency assessments. Um, 11.6, Curriculum writing, 11.7, overnight trip, 11.8, memorandum of agreement between Keene University Diversity Council of, on Global Education and Citizenship in Hillsborough Township Public Schools, 11.9, policies for the second reading. Uh, can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion by the board? Uh, 11.8, is there, um, does this does this have to be in the vote this evening or, because I was just curious for a little bit more information on it. So this is a partnership with Kane so that our um, staff can take graduate courses through Kane University and they take them as a cohort here on campus. Any other comments or questions from the board? Uh, seeing none, we'll take roll. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Kidd? Yes. Ms. Lanning Beater? Yes. Ms. Nurse? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Trujillo? Yes. And Mr. Marini? Yes. Motion passes. Human resources, I'd like to present for consideration a sidebar agreement. 12.2, um, um, approved retirements and resignations. 12.3, um, approved leaves of absences. 12.4, uh, revised appointments for this year. 12.5, um, um, contract change. 12.6, um, transfer and change in assignments. 12.7, um, Approve leave of absence. 12.8, approve appointments. 12.9, affirm, affirm appointments from the summer. 
and 12.10 approved mentors and buddies for the school year. 12.11 approved sixth and seventh period um, coverages. 12.12 um, .12, approved extra coverage. 12.13 approved summer work and summer athletic camp staff. 12.14 approved group changes. All right, uh, can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments or questions from the board? Mr. Gillette? Yeah, uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, so um, the topic of um, retirements, resignations, and hires came up at our retreat, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, is that correct, Paul? I believe so. Yeah, so um, I think we are waiting for eventually so, uh, after the, you know, after the school year settled down, to get some numbers comparing to the last couple of years. The best way to compare, I think we said, was with hires, right? And see if our, because you mentioned like 67, but then broken down into some other categories today, and how that number would compare to the to previous years so we could actually see what this issue yep. is so we can better tackle it. Is that that's so be coming? I'll, I'll reshare that. I shared that last week in the right. um, little FYI, um, but I'll, I'll share, reshare it again. Well, is that something that we, we shared with the public, though, like on something? No, I, we can do that. Yeah, that's why that's because I know we talked about it and we got some backup on it, but um, the public hasn't seen that yet. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll take a roll. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Kidd? Yes. Ms. Lanning Beater? Yes. Ms. Nurse? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Trujillo? Yes. Mr. Marini? Yes, motion passes. I'd like to present for consideration operations, um, approved monthly financials, approved line item transfers, 13.2, 13.3, approved financial status, 13.4, award professional services contract for nursing services for this year, 13.5, approved submission of application for stabilization aid. 13.6, um, um, accept donations. 13.7, approved the disposal and sale of obsolete items. 13.8, approved the addendum to a settlement agreement. 13.9, um, approved settlement agreement. Can I get a motion and a second on the action and agenda? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll move the roll. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Kidd? Yes. Ms. Lanning Beater? Yes. Ms. Nurse? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rue? Yes. Ms. Trujillo? Yes. And Mr. Marini? Yes, motion passes. All right, we'll move on to the second public comment period. Uh, we very much welcome input from the public. During the meetings, there will be two 30-minute periods of time that the meetings will be open for public comment. Where members of the public are invited to comment, which they may do if they are attending in person. During the second public comment period, members of the public may comment on any school or school district issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the school district. As for bylaw by 0167, before you see your comment, you will be asked to provide your name and address. The three-minute period limit on public comment. Please understand that our public forums are not structured as question and answer sessions, but rather are offered as opportunities to share your thoughts with the board instances where the board believes there's a misunderstanding or inaccuracy, the board president or superintendent will address the comment. There will be times when a member of the public makes a comment or asks a question about personnel or hiring decisions. Kindly note that the Open Public Meetings Act and the privacy rights of public em employees encompass therein. Do not permit the board to discuss personal issues in public session. Hi, Jane Stats, 101 Devonshire Court, Hillsboro. Uh, welcome, Dr. Fishbein. Um, I feel like uh, I'd like to applaud the uh, collaborative efforts on the part of the board, administration, HEA, and our state legislators that led to the million dollars that the district recently received from the state. I feel like a relative of someone who just won the lottery because I'm here to ask you to use some of that found money for a specific worthy cause. The lighting and sound systems in the high school auditorium need to be updated and repaired. They have been in an inadequate state for many years. The lighting and sound quality do not properly highlight 
the, sorry, the amazing talents of so many of our students. They also pose potential dangers. A lot of money has repeatedly been spent on the temporary use of outside equipment and personnel. That's obviously a Band-Aid approach. The auditorium is used not only for many student performances, but also for staff meetings and community events. The district has upgraded many other components of our facilities. Upgrading the sound and lighting systems would be an equitable use of these additional funds. I mean, that, I, mean I crafted that carefully, um, probably a little cold and antiseptic, but are, 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 if anyone has ever seen any of the musicals or plays at the high school, they are fantastic. I mean, they rival professional performances. And uh, it would only be fair to them to give them equipment that better serves what, uh, what their performances are worthy of um, uh, so that we can better view them and hear them uh, and also for their own safety. Thank you. Thank you. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Tanya Lockwood, Millstone River Road. Um, it's very encouraging that we have a seemingly well-organized search process for a permanent superintendent um, and that it is progressing along well. Um, however, there is the very real possibility that greater than one third of this Board of Education will be different come January. Um, which means that a full one-third of the people who will be responsible for working with the new superintendent are not going to be responsible for making the decision about who the new superintendent should be. And it truly is a full one-third. Three of you will not be here in January as members. I hope you continue to attend meetings um, and offer your, your experience and expertise as the stats has done. But it's a little worrisome that what is essentially going to be a lame duck body is going to be making the decision. Um, I don't know what the right answer is. I don't want to be up here, quite frankly, I was joking around with the stats about it. I don't want to be up here like Mitch McConnell making Merrick Garland arguments <laughs> um, that you know we should let the people vote and blah, 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 blah. But, but I think there is some merit to the fact that potentially nearly half of the board could be different and that the characteristics of what whoever is interviewing and being decided on now um, walks into in January could be a very different environment. Um, and given what we've been talking about with turnover, given what we've been talking about with culture, given what we've been talking about with community confidence over the last however many months and years, um, I don't know what the right answer is, but I hope that that was taken into consideration, um, that, that the board will look very different when the new superintendent starts. Um, and that if it was taken into consideration, that that could be communicated to the public in a way that the priorities of the search committee of this board, there's some, as much as there can be, guarantee that there will be continuity with those um, same criteria for the new board. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. I, I wish I, I wish I could, like I said, I wish I could come up here and say, we should wait till January, gosh darn it. But that leaves us with an interim, no offense, Dr. Fishbein, but that leaves us with an interim longer um, than maybe necessary. So if there's any communication the board could do on how that's been presented internally with the search committee, with the search organization, um, maybe some of the pros and cons that were reviewed with the, the search uh, firm, on waiting versus doing it sooner. Uh, I think that might help have a little bit more community confidence with knowing that the decision that's being made by this board is a board that is a decision that is setting up next year's board for success. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, seeing no others, we will move to, uh, we'll close public comment, move to board comment. If there's any. I'll make one comment. Um, obviously, the, the search is 
very confidential, so we can't share much. But I can say that you know we we're whittling down our, our search right now, and I think everybody was unhappy with some part of it, which means that everyone has a diverse slate of candidates, and the candidates are in fact diverse in all ways that you can imagine. And I think uh, we're going to come out of this with a very very strong superintendent, regardless of who we pick at this point. So. Um, you know, we're considering all all of those concerns we move forward. Obviously, with the with the confidentiality, and that was part of the agreement with almost everybody that they didn't want their name shared or any information about where they work, et cetera, et cetera. So that's about all I can share with that. But we are we are moving forward, Mr. Gillette. Well, I thought it one. Um, we did have at least one, maybe a couple of emails recently about um, athletic fees, and I comment on this probably once a year since we started collecting athletic fees about three years ago i'm not really sure how many years now about three um and, and uh the questions usually are about um can we can we segregate the money collected from the athletic fees and segregate make sure that they go just to athletics well you can you can't do that there's no separate account that that can be collected into but i just want to reassure the public that the money collected from athletic fees is, only amounts in the aggregate to about 10 to 15 percent of the entire athletic budget. So it's it's really you can you can you can you can even if you could put it separately, it wouldn't it doesn't really make that it would it doesn't it doesn't do what you think it's doing. Um, that money is not being siphoned off for anything else. Believe me, if we collect you know, 150 thousand dollars, there's another 850 thousand dollars put in by the district. It's more than that all, all around, but. You know, um, you know, that's what it is. Now, having said that, we still need to keep collecting those fees because those now, now that we've started it, as, and maybe I, you know, I was in favor of collecting the fees and I would like to see them go away in the future, obviously. That's my philosophical position on it. But in the short term now, that's $150,000 is, is two teachers every year. And, and, you, and you have to continue that until there's another source of funding maybe down the line an increase in state aid one of these years an increase not a decrease an increase which then even if you don't get another increase the next year you've still got that increase built in so then you've got it every year if you got a million dollar increase then you could think about doing things like um uh, getting rid of the athletic fees and uh, returning more courtesy busing to the district things like that but until we see a big increase in some other funding source i'm very you know, disappointed to have to report that those are, fees are going to have to remain the way they are now for the foreseeable future. That's all I want to say on that. That's my report for this year. Probably my <laughs> last one ever. Any other comments from the board? All right. So then I will take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. <laughs>